Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. I went online to become a private detective. It was a private detective school online, and I paid online. I never heard from them again. I thought to myself, I either got ripped off, or this is my first case. This is a journalistic podcast, Shannon. We vaccinate our listeners with answers. And I'm going to keep lip syncing the important questions until TikTok gives me a show. Shannon, how can the moon landing be real if the moon itself is fake? It's not true, Mike. Oh, isn't it true, Shannon? You're fake. You're a hologram. One in five New Yorkers are food insecure. What's your solution for that, Mike? Fortune cookie. Because that's food and advice at the same time. Shannon, at least have the decency to backstab me, okay? You stab me in the front every time. Some fans can't watch the podcast because they're triggered by our sexuality. And message to those fans, we will leak a sex tape right into your mouth. This is Mike Vecchione Investigates. And you're not better than me. Welcome to Mike Vecchio and Investigates, everybody. It's another stellar episode. I'm still in Aruba vacationing, but still working. It's a working vacation. And for those of you who are angry at me because it's freezing there and you can't get out of your driveways because of snow and ice and because of black ice and because you haven't salted your driveways like I've instructed you to do on several videos, Um, If you're hating on me, well, then I'm sorry. But thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, being here once again. I know it's very tough for a lot of our fans to uh, click on the computer and to uh, actually do that. That's a big deal for a lot of our fans to actually click on and be part of something productive. So thank you so much for being here and joining us. And I'm sorry that you're in the freezing snow and I'm in Aruba at an undisclosed location, at an all-inclusive hotel, casino. Um, And I'm very sorry about that, but I do appreciate you being here. Uh, We have a very special guest. She's hilarious uh, comedian, and she is also an Irish. Um, Please welcome Katie Boyle to the program. Hey, thanks for having me. Katie, welcome. We worked one time before during the pandemic. Um, it was a it was a parking lot show where we got up and did stand up comedy in front of cars. And when we, the joke would hit, they would beep and they would activate their wiper fluid if it was really funny and um, turn their engines off and on, blast their. They would do car related reactions. And um, how are you? And how did you come through that show? I know this isn't like, I really liked it. Most comedians are like, oh, I hate that stuff or I hated Zooms, but I like different things. I even like when it's like a bad bar show sometimes because I feel like I'm like going to war. So it's like a fun yeah. ex- exercise. Yes, it's an exercise. And how long have you been doing comedy? Seven years. Seven. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's a good time. That's a good time to be in it. You know what I mean? Like you're still excited. You're still yeah. writing new stuff. You're you're turning out material. And uh, that's a great attitude to have. Um, um, so you liked it all. You liked the car shows. You liked the bar shows. You're into it. Well, yeah. And it was a bit of a novelty for me, too, because back home, we would think of you guys having those like car cinemas or like movie theaters. Movie theaters. Drive. We don't have- drive-ins we don't have anything like that so that was like fun to be a part of it and I thought the people in the cars were very nice they would just beep when you stop talking so it's fine and it's usually that's different because usually in our cars we have a little road rage problem here in America we're densely populated even though we have a big land and um in our cars where it's usually not that friendly the beeping is usually not laughter it's usually get out of my way I'm gonna run you over type of thing and I don't know if you have that in Ireland. Uh, we've had other Irish on the show. I hate to brag. You're not our first. <laughs> well, you know, there is a lot of us. So, but yeah, yeah, I don't, I never drove in Ireland or here. So I can't, well, I don't think there's road rage in Ireland. I think everybody's pretty friendly. And I think so. I don't know. At the drive- drink- oh, we don't have drive-ins, but there's a lot of drink driving in Ireland that I do know. 
Is there a lot of drunk driving? Do you guys have a breathalyzer or are you pulled over if you're not drunk? Yeah, they'll pull yeah. over. But it's more because in the countryside, there's no taxis, there's no Ubers or Lyfts. So right. if you go out, the only way to get home usually is if you drive. So there's... You have to take a goat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just steal a goat from a field. No, it's more sheep, really, to be honest. So You have to take a sheep home. I'm yeah. just, Don't worry about me. I'm going to get a sheep. <laughs> and the sheep I'm just walks sheep. around in circles. <laughs> well, and then the danger is if you're drunk and you go to get a sheep and then there's a lot of sheep, you start counting them, you fall asleep. True or false? That's very true. Or some people might have sexually assaulted the uh, sheep. So, you know, you got to be very careful. Everybody's got a kink, Katie. And I think <laughs> a lot of our fans feel what you're saying. A lot of our fans are snowed in, they're iced in, and they are, they're indulging in their own kinks. And... Um, I think some people just like to shave the sheep. They don't even do anything sexual. They just shave the sheep and that's what turns them on. And I think that's more repulsive than anything. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's lovely. Then the sheep isn't, you know, feeling abused. And yeah, someone... But I think that a bald sheep, you know, like a sheep that's um, sheared, is that the term? Yeah. They're sheared and then they then they get to hang out. You know, you put them with sheep that have a lot of hair and it, psychologically it makes them insecure. Do you do you think that that I mean, I'm not I know you're not a shepherd. Are you? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe in a different life. But I think maybe the sheep is cooler because he's like a punk, you know, where they shave their heads. Right. A rebel. Yeah. yeah. In Ireland, shaved yeah. heads are the scary people. If I see a shaved head guy, I'll cross the street. Well, do you think that um, the sheeps who are shaved are racist? It's a racial statement. I'm a skinhead. I'm a skinhead. I don't like you guys. <laughs> Maybe. I don't think it's racial. More, um, Is it racial when they're skinheads? No, it's more it's like... It a... can be two types of skinheads. It can be okay. racist or non-racist skinheads. Oh. And this, I think it's the same thing for sheep. A lot of, a lot of you know... Um, I, I feel like in Ireland, it's not a racist thing. It's more of a, I'm a tough man. You're tough. Yeah. I'm going to rob this story. That's a, that's a noun in your, in your land. we we'll call somebody a tough. Yeah. Tough man. Yeah. A that's tough. scary. Yeah. Just a tough, he's a tough lad. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, I just use it as an adjective there. Our fans don't know parts of speech. Katie. That's fine. I don't know parts of the speech either. So I like your Believe fans. Believe me, you know a lot more than our fans do. <laughs> you're teaching them with everything that you say. And it's they're glad that you're here because they have basically nothing to look forward to. So mm-hmm. we provide, we're their main source of entertainment. So we have to slow it down and teach them. So um, just keep that in mind when you're talking at the fans. We talk at them. We don't talk to them. Okay, well, I do have a good trick for them then, because I say the wrong words all the time and people will correct me and I don't like that. Don't correct me. So I'll tell them it's an Irish thing. So if anybody ever corrects you for your bad speech, just be like, oh, and then say whatever your heritage is. And then people feel really bad. Well, it's like our fans don't have an ethnicity. So it's like, well, it's an outside of Rochester thing. <laughs> say that. That's the fine. Lower Albany thing. You know? <laughs> I believe it. I mean, that's what they have to say. We're here to help them. And I hope this is, I hope, I hope they learn. I hope that they learn that um, they're still valued members of our society. Even though they're not productive members of our society, they're valued because they're people. And, you know, people are great. Yeah, better than cheap. To say that. Um, and what's going on in your life right now, Katie? Um, not a lot, to be honest. Honestly, I feel like my life is really boring right now. I'm in like a really happy relationship. So I didn't realize that a lot of my conversations were bad relationships. So that's kind of boring, but nice. Um, it's and, boring that you're in a good relationship. Yeah, no, I like it. I'm happy. Yeah, but I did you like a lot of drama. No, I, well, I must have before or not even that I liked it. I just think that that was a lot of my conversations, you know, like, oh, this guy did this or he like checked my pulse or he has his ex's underwear. And now I'm in this like 10 month easy. It's nice. But I was like, shit, I got to start like reading the news. So I have things to talk about. I like listened to a conspiracy podcast today about Fauci. And I was like, oh, <laughs> is it true that he's a chiropractor? I have no idea. I just people got are saying part. he's a chiropractor now. I'm not trying to spread oh. fake news, but people are saying that he's a chiropractor. And I don't know if that's true or not. 
I like um, Matthew. He has a vowel at the end of his name. He's one of all, he's one of one of mine. Oh, okay. Yeah, we well, gotta yeah. stick with your own. So you gotta <laughs> stick with your own, even though I think diversity is a, is an important thing too. But sticking with your own is also very good. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm just everything's good. That's all. I've been watching Too Hot to Handle, so I'm pretty basic right now. And that's the most exciting thing in my life. What's too hot to handle? It's a show on Netflix where they get really hot people and they think they're going to like a pleasure island to like hook up. So it's like a lot of UK people right. and they're going there to have sex with random people. They, they are committed phobes. And when they get on the island, they're told they're not allowed to have sex for like the two months and they have to form real attachments, like genuine connections. And they win money if they do. So like they're kind of forced to be like, so how are you where usually they're like look at my pecs uh so it's a lot i fun. know that just sounds like nazi tactics you're not allowed <laughs> to have sex hot people need to have sex and i'm lecturing the people at home hot people like us katie <laughs> me you and shannon and i'm again the third hottest on the podcast right now <laughs> me you and shannon are all very hot and hot people need to have sex and I, I just don't understand what the rest of the country doesn't get. We're not good at talking to people <laughs> and we're not good at making conversations. Our bodies are excellent and we have high cheekbones and good facial features. And if that's not enough, turn the channel. You know, that's my attitude. How do you feel about it as a hot person watching other hot people who are forced into this dog and pony show of like, oh, tell me your favorite color. It's like, shut up already and let me see your abs. Right, Katie? I love it because they always rule break and it's fun to see them try to have a deep emotional conversation because as deep for them is just like, so what's your middle name? <laughs> you know, they're not. So it's fun to see that kind of, I like it. I it's, like, kind take away the sex it. Yeah. it's kind of fun to see it, but I like when they break the rules. Do you like that? Yeah. 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 When hot people break the rules. Um, yeah. Just cause it's like exciting and a bit of drama. It's exciting, and... But you know, the rules don't apply to hot people. Yeah. I think, I, I think it's fair to say that in society in general, um, the rules don't apply to hot people. The rules apply to the uglier masses. Hot people can just pretty much do whatever they want. That's an unwritten rule. Yeah, but for a devil's advocate, don't you feel like hot people don't get a chance to like develop like a good personality or like, I'm sure some of them do, but I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's good to be given everything um, or they get judged. So like if you're hot, Sometimes people are like, oh, fuck them. They're hot. Like I, yeah, they're probably like, like they, you know, they're probably not a nice person or they're probably vain. And just because they're good looking doesn't mean that's true either. Uh, I blacked out on the last couple of things you were saying because I was on <laughs> Instagram. Okay, yeah. I was no, posting, no, no, no. <laughs> I was posting <laughs> selfies. During the last couple of things that you were saying, I was posting selfies of me doing. I will admit to these. <laughs> I was doing my enticing, sexy fish face. And I'm sorry that I blacked out. I'm sure it was very important what you were saying, Katie. <laughs> but that just goes to my point that hot people don't listen and we don't have to. Sorry, not sorry, which is something that hot people are saying now. Yeah, but also as well, hot people now aren't what I would consider hot. So is it different know, in Ireland? I don't know. No, I don't think. Well, yeah, it's different in Ireland. All the girls wear fake tan and they're all kind of like orange. And right. that's what's considered hot. But I mean, like this uh, eyelash, big lips, fillers. Yeah. Right. Fillers. There's like an Instagram hot. And when you yeah. see that in real life, it's not actually as hot. I just think I prefer natural. But also, if you're into that, good for you. But I think this there's an Instagram hot that's like unrealistic. You know, um, I'll tell you what our fans are into. Anybody <laughs> that will give them any kind of love or affection. That's, that's what lovely. I'm into. That's a lovely. hug. Anybody who will acknowledge them is but, pretty much what they're into. I mean, an eye, eye contact for them is like marriage. Oh, it, well, everything lovely. is I exacerbated with our fans. So do you have a nickname, Katie? Uh... My grandmother would call me Kitty, but that's it. Kitty? Yeah. Is it cat related or just a spoof on your name? Just a spoof on my name. Kitty, Katie. I'm dating a Katie now. 
You yes. might know her. I do. She's great. Do you Katie's have a monthly meeting? No, but she did give me a baking pan thing for my new apartment that I've used so many times. So a baking pan thing. Yeah, I'm really not. I'm not hot enough to be this dumb. <laughs> I gotta like go more. get. I gotta it go. sounds like you're. It sounds like you're hot through the roof. A baking pan thing. That's <laughs> something that a hot person would say, Katie. I gotta go get some fake eyelashes and start wearing wearing you're foundation. Being so hot right now. <laughs> and I am too. Asking the tough questions. I'm asking the tough Instagram questions that mm-hmm. are fresh. Yeah. And uh, so my Katie gave you, do Katie's just lend each other things and they don't tell the rest of society? Is there an unspoken bond between you and other Katie's? Yeah. And I'm not I, talking about the Cathy's. I'm not talking no. about the Catherine's out there who are sticks in the mud. I'm talking about the fun party girl Katie's in the world. Yeah, it has to be the Katie's who are Katie on their birth cert because that fucks people up. People are always like, what's your real name? And I'm like, Katie. And they're like, what's your real name? And I'm like, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> so it has to be the, the progressive Katie's. The progressive Katie's. And there's something yeah. hypnotizing about Katie. I am Katie. You know what I mean? It's like such a fun, it's such a fun name, you know? There's no responsibility to a Katie. No, we've had this discussion on this podcast before there for the Catherine or God forbid a Kathy, you know, there's so much responsibility. It's such a daunting task to have those kinds of names because you have so much to do and you have to mail letters and get things notarized. But Katie's don't worry about any of that shit. I mean, they just exchange baking pans. They don't know the names of them. They just give them to other Katie's. They like to have fun and um, just have a good time and do their hair and eyelashes and get their nails done. You know, do you find- I, do. I agree because Katrin sounds like a nun. It just, that's no fun. And then right. Katty sounds like someone who'd rat you out, you know? You don't want to, you don't want to Katty while you're doing drugs. You don't want to be around a Kathy. I've always said that when you're doing drugs, <laughs> you don't want to be around a Kathy. No. You know? A Kathy is just like a Karen to people from Ireland. Do you guys call Absolutely. them Kathy's? Do you yeah, guys yeah. call them Kathy's? I think so. No, you call them Sharon's. But... A Sharon? Yeah. <laughs> that's different we that's a different that's a different kind of kathy a sharon that's like the worst that you could be a sharon um okay so that's good so you're in a functional relationship and it's a lot of fun and he's not stealing people's underwears or he's you're not scrolling you're not going through his phone is that a thing that katie's do it's just for my own personal knowledge and for our fans who are dating katie (laughs) did katie go through people's phones yes or no no and me personally I don't do it because I I'm afraid of what I would see and it's like I don't think you'll ever see anything bad but like let's say if he just like sent a heart to a friend then all of a sudden you're like why is this bitch getting hurts I don't need yeah. to I don't need yeah. I don't need to know this <laughs> but why is that bitch getting hearts <laughs> well, maybe why I should check is that phone. getting hearts no. no so I don't check I don't even look oh no now I like if it's in front of me I probably will look like a little side well, this eye. podcast makes you think and I'm glad you're pensive like that because <laughs> at first you was like I never look I never look I've evolved above that and then you stopped for a second and you said I do look yeah I do like look. if it's in front of me and he's texting I will be like yeah who's Michelle who's Michelle and he'll be like my cousin <laughs> I'm like okay <laughs> or so you say your cousin I know. Yeah. Right? Your third cousin. I saw his cousin. She's really hot. So honestly, wouldn't be surprised. Wow. Yeah. It was awkward. She was also pregnant. And I was like, this woman is like the hottest woman I've seen. And she has a child inside her. It's not uh, it's, hot pregnant. Yeah. She was tiny and fit and had a big arse while being pregnant. I was like, what the fuck is going on? What did you say? An arse? Yeah. Do you spell it with an R? Yeah. A or S E. Wow. That's different. That's a different word than what we're using. Yeah, you use ass. It sounds uh, like it sounds we'll nerdy. Backside. Huh? Oh, backside. <laughs> Let me slap your backside. Let me like, slap my your back. child. Baby, my backside. <laughs> oh. 
Um, so she was hot and she was pregnant and that means the baby's probably going to be hot and then that baby's going to get pregnant and it's just like, it's just, and that, and then they'll go on an island show where they're forced to communicate. Yeah. So that's great that that's going on. We got some fan questions, Katie. Do you want to um, help me answer them? Yeah, I love questions. Well, I'm in Aruba <laughs> right now, Katie, and uh, the, this is from a fan. What is your least favorite restaurant on the island? And I'll tell you what I don't like. I'll tell you, I don't like tasting menus. You ever been to a restaurant with tasting menus? They give you no. small portions of food and it's delicious food. So I like that, but it's just a tasting menu. So they give you a little nibble of it and then they move on to something else. And then you go to the restaurant and you get all these delicious little nibbles and then you leave hungry. And it's just I not love- fair. It's just not fair. I don't know if you're what the justice system is like in Ireland, but it's not fair to give somebody a little piece of delicious food and then give them the check. Well, we definitely don't like that in Ireland because we have like generational trauma from the famine. So you got to serve a big chunk of food. You can't be given little. There's no taste. But I think I would like that if you get to sample everything. You you sample everything on the menu. You get to sample everything on the menu, but you leave hungry. Fair (laughs) or not fair? Okay, it should be like you sample everything and then you pick a main course. Yeah, you sample everything and then you pick one thing and get to pick out on that. Yeah, I right, agree with Katie? you. That's a different yeah. amendment to the menu. But I like what you said with famine because <laughs> it feels like a mini famine there. It feels like you're you're giving me a taste of something and then taking it away from me. And that just seems more like torture than it does mm-hmm. a restaurant. Yeah, that's like abuse. I don't know. That feels it like... It feels like abuse. And I know people jump to conclusions <laughs> in this day and age and especially on like these uh, like TikTok or whatever. But... A tasting menu is abuse. I'll just say it. It's abusive. Yeah. You it's, should write a long Yelp. That's always fun for people to read. Well, I wrote in my journal and I keep that private, but I should make it a Yelp review. Mm-hmm. Say this is colonization over my stomach. It's colon. It's oppression. It's oppression. It's oppression of people's taste buds. Maybe you should march outside it. Should I what? March, maybe? March on it? That's outside it. Yeah, outside the restaurant with a sign, feed me, feed me. <laughs> that's that's really a great because protesting is in now. Mm-hmm. And I could protest the fact that they're tempting us with small foods and then just not giving us any more. Yeah. I didn't I didn't I didn't march for the women's march because why not? I was tired. I don't want to <laughs> I don't well, what wanna, about the um I did uh, it for BLM. You did it for BLM. What about when um, uh, the March for Chronic Fatigue Syndrome? Will you march for that or will you be in bed? Do you guys march or do you guys just sleep through it? I would sleep through it. I'm Yeah, I have chronic fatigue syndrome. I slept till two. When Shannon texted me, I was like, oh, God, I just woke up. Did you, did you tie one on last night? No, I don't really drink. I just stay up late watching shows and I'm like, I can't sleep early. I don't know. I get like anxiety about sleeping early. Is that common amongst the Irish saying that you don't drink, but then secretly drinking? Yes. Talk to me about that. Yes. Okay. We're trying to, we're trying to overrule that stereotype. That stereotype I'm, is one I'm that drinking really... right now. No. <laughs> what a fun stereotype to have, Katie. That's a fun one. I think it's like not, a hundred percent fair because yeah. well most people in ireland there's not a lot to do on the weekends we're not alcoholics we just binge drink and then right. secondly uh you guys drink way more i used to daytime bartend here and i was like these people are alcoholics like you call us alcoholics but drinking they like construction workers will come in doing shots and then they go build buildings in new york yes. city yeah um, and then like your drinks or your measures are double our measures Long Island iced tea is insane. We don't have anything like that in Ireland. We just have pints. Because we have it regional. Our people in Long Island, every time you sell a Long Island iced tea, the people in Long Island get $1.25 tax dollars. It goes into bridges and tunnels. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. They should do less alcohol in it, though, because people only buy one and then they pass out. Well, I love the fact that construction workers buy it, drink it, and then go back to work to build stuff. That's why Shannon's roof is leaking. Shannon, can you come in here and show us your roof? Do you think that the drunks built your, um, put the plumbing system into your home, Shannon? It's possible. Here, hold on. There, 
as my god my leaky I'm sorry. That's drunk that's, that's a drunk person who did that <laughs> katie that's some guy i served i'm sorry and it's like consistent i worked for seven years now i only work one day a week but for seven years i was doing like most days and it was consistent construction workers doing shots on their break and hiding in the back so their foreman wouldn't see them wow breaking the rules they're probably hot also you know hot no no they're not <laughs> construction workers weren't hot even in a rough sort of way no no they were nice but they were all like yeah, young, yeah, young and married, and like mm-hmm. kids on Long Island. They were like fun, but no, no, I wouldn't say hot. Well, ugly people need to drink too, Katie. Okay. Yeah, they need to drink ugly more. Ugly people need to drink also. Yeah. And Shannon's been having a series of problems. Her cat has diabetes. Her roof is dripping. She went to Jamaica, and I think that was pretty fun. But you know, Shannon's been going through it, so we need to offer her our support. Thanks, guys. Shannon, you can have a drink. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. I can really use one. Um, okay, let's go to the next question. Um, I'm in Aruba, Katie, and there is a winter storm in New York. And this person is asking, how did you feel being in Aruba during the winter storm? And um, first of all, how many inches of snow did you guys get? Oh, I don't know. Well, that's just because I don't pay attention to these things, but it was, it was quite big. <laughs> it was more than like, I think it was like eight inches or something. Eight inches. That doesn't, because we're on the metric system here. So I don't really understand what that is even. So I kind of just check out, you know, when people start saying eight inches and you're using the English system, this is the metric system here. So I don't feel bad. And I tell you what, I did have to wear my sunglasses yesterday because the sun was really, really hot. So I, I understand that you have to adjust, like you guys have to wear boots and a, um, extra coat. I have to wear sunglasses. And I so, wasn't wearing my sunglasses, Katie, because my Katie, the other Katie, the al- alternative Katie, she um, bought me the sunglasses and then I wasn't wearing them. And then she goes, where's your sunglasses? And I go, they're in my bag. And she goes, immediately she goes, she goes, the sun can burn your retinas. She's right. And I go, just say that you want me to wear the sunglasses that you bought me. Stop coming up with your own scientific facts that the sun can burn my eyes. It can. No, I was going to say the same thing. You need to put on your sunglasses and put on your sunscreen or sun cream, whatever it's called. Um, It's going to get you. We're safer here in the storm. You guys are safe. You're safe from the dangerous rays of the sun. Mm-hmm. And congratulations. Congratulations on that. On being safe in the, from the sun? Yeah, from being very safe from the dangerous rays. There's dangerous rays. Of the sun. I went to a beach yesterday uh, called Baby Beach, which is the number one rated beach in the Caribbean. I don't know how they're ranked or <laughs> how who does the ranking, but I'm just saying it's the number one rated beach in the entire Caribbean. And I was in the water and there was a school of fish that swam by. And I was like, this could be potentially dangerous. Uh, yeah, I went to Hawaii yeah. and the fish had teeth. That was terrifying. Everybody was like, you're so lucky to be there. And I was like, I think these fish are going to nibble on me. Right. And the fish, they call it nibbling and nibbling sounds less threatening. I and know. then you feel safer. It lulls you into a false sense of security. And the next thing you know, you're being eaten by a school of fish, <laughs> which sounds educational, but is really <laughs> filthy, dirty and dangerous. Yeah, when we were there too, there was like an eel, but he didn't call it an eel. He was like, look at that sea worm. And I was like, don't try to make yeah. this sound nicer. I hate when people eel. do that, Katie. I hate it when they yeah. go, oh, that eel, the eel. Oh, you mean the toga, the water toga? <laughs> you know, the water scarf? It's like, it's an eel, dude. It's yeah. dangerous. But that probably happened in Hawaii and not because Hawaii isn't, it's probably the eighth best beach. But I was at the number one best beach in the Caribbean. It was ranked by uh, Beaches Weekly. Um, Mike, who is the most interesting people that you met on this trip? And I'll tell you what, Katie, we were at dinner one night, minding our own business. And um, Katie, my Katie was in the bathroom. She started talking to this woman and the woman later walked by and Katie waved to her and she came over her and her, the guy she was with. And we started talking to them and they were from New York and they were 
crazy people. <laughs> Have you ever started talking to somebody and then you realize this person and the person that they're with are insane? Yeah, and it's scary then because you don't know how to get out of that conversation right. without like you don't want them to like stab you with the knife. You're you trapped. Have to be very, you have to be very uh, skillful. Right. Because you're trapped. It feels like you're trapped in that conversation. She and the, the worst is that they're just talking about themselves the entire oh. time. They barely asked what we did. They kept talking about what they did and and they were and they were they were on a vacation together, but not together really. So they were talking smack about each other under their breath to each of us in different conversations. So they weren't even talking behind their back. They were talking in front of each other's faces to the other people in low low tones. What were they saying? That's an amazing thing to pull off, Katie. Have you ever done that? (laughs) No, no, I don't like, I don't like, I never talk about people Cause I don't like, I get, I don't want, I don't like, I don't like drama unless it's someone I'm dating. <laughs> sounds, sounds kind of, uh, but I don't, uh, I won't bitch about people cause it scares me. I'll tell my dad, I'll call my dad and he won't know who these people are, but it's a safe space, you know? And I'll be like, they'll never guess what Shannon said. <laughs> yeah. It would be fun if you did that right in front of Shannon. Shannon is like right there and you just, <laughs> you, go, you go, excuse me. And K- Shannon says something like, something great. My roof is caving in. I'm dating a prisoner. My cat has diabetes. And you go, excuse me, Shannon. And you stay right in front of her and go, hi, dad. (laughs) Shannon, let me tell you a little bit about Shannon. And you just talk in front of her face. This is why, wait, what did they do? What were they saying about each other? Well, the guy was just kept saying like how much money he had. He's like, I, I, I have a Tesla. I have, I own a, I own a, a company. I have, uh, I live in New York four days a week and then I fly to Florida for the weekends. And then I'm a JetBlue member. I sit in first class. I have this watch. It's very expensive. Just anything that you could think of. It was so status related, you know? That's so sad. Could you imagine if we had to do that? that? It's a sign of insecurity. Do you, when you see a man do that, don't you think of insecurity? It's so unattractive and it's like so lonely and it's like all about his money. It's literally like, oh, I have no personality, right. no crack, no banter. I have right. nothing to offer other than- He's talking about the things that you have, <sighs> you know? And this is, I don't know if you weren't worried about this, but this is an Apple watch and it's the newest version and it keeps track of all my steps. Okay, well, if you know, this is a, a T-shirt that I, I stole <laughs> from my boyfriend, so not too bad. But uh, if we're talking about things you own, my conversation yeah. will only last about a minute. <laughs> I'm so poor. You don't have that much? No, I don't really like having too much either. I don't want to be rich. Are you? You don't want to be rich? No, I want to have enough money that if I fall over, I can go to the hospital and not worry yeah. about it and not have to give like a fake address um yeah you don't want that hospital you want that hospital bling yeah other than that yeah. i think people with too much money it's just i would feel so guilty as well I, if i ever got successful i'd just be like giving money to my dad and my family and like i don't know and like be, you know like mental health institutions or something i don't i right. don't think anybody should have too much money it's weird it's a great idea gonna... katie you know you just stumbled onto something I know that you were stumbling backwards into I don't I want to be poor I want to be poor unless it's the hospital, but I think it's great if you started. Would you start your own mental hospital? Yeah, because I think the mental institutions in New York are fucked. Right, and they're fucked in Ireland as well. Literally, like if you have mental health issues, it's like you're just fucked. You're just sent right. out into a field, basically. So I would, uh, if I got successful, I would help with that because I think- But if they're sent into the field with sheep, sheep can be very calming. Sheep can be very calming, Katie. But what if it's one of those shaved sheep from like the night out before and you're kind of dealing with your mental health and a shaved sheep comes up to you? Yeah, that's terrible. You're right about that, Katie. That's triggering. Triggering. Triggering and could set you off into some kind of an episode. You know what they should do? They should do- like a too hot to handle, but too mental to handle island. And they put all the mental people on an island and they have to work through their problems together. I think it's great if we um, if we got some money together, you don't want to have anything personally. I understand that. I will take most of the luxury items so that you're not tortured. But I would like to have, we could start a mental hospital for hot people. Yeah, because they're mental. hot mental people. And then, and we go and search for them on the, 
and we tackle them and straight jacket them and then bring them into the mental hospital. It's only hot people. What do you think, Katie? Yeah, I love it. Well, we these people that we talked to would have made the mental hospital because they they were definitely insane. Wait, what was the girl saying? I'm so sorry. Like, this is the girl, I thought the guy was bad. The girl was nonstop just talking about what she was doing and what just she um I think she might have been a little drunk because she was telling, she didn't tell to me I was talking to the guy, but she told a street joke. It's always bad to tell a joke to comedians, yeah. but she started a street joke four times. It took her four times for the setup. And then the punchline wasn't funny. And I just don't know. She did well, it four times. I think there needs to be more like, uh, like people need to be told more not to be funny because you know everybody thinks like well I gotta be funny and like guys do this a lot where they think and I see this uh when I used to work nights in the bar you would always hear like the loudest guy trying to be funny to get yes. the women but like it wasn't funny and it's embarrassing what's so that funny. guy to get our, our fans are um incels a lot of them so how, how does that guy get how do you get women how do you actually organically be funny Katie you just don't because there's so many other things. Like if you're not funny, don't try it. Because right. the thing is when you're not trying it, you'll just naturally be funny. I feel like if you're yeah. not, if you're not, when you force, when you force anything, it doesn't work. So for you incels, and I'm not, is an incel a guy who can't like get sex and is frustrated by it? A he's lot angry of our fans are men and women who can't get sex. Um, well, I think stop worrying about getting the sex car and just be genuine because yeah. you're going to meet. Yeah. And also maybe lower your standards. Sometimes people are uh, like. Their standards are low. Let me stop oh. you right there. Our standards are very, very low on this podcast. I mean, gutter. Pizza okay, maybe up your standards. Pizza maybe rat low, low, Katie. I think people are, need to just be themselves. And I know that's such basic, obvious advice, but like. You meet, you go on a date with people and they're just so obviously fake or that's not them. And it's like, just, you, you know, and then you end up being friends, like, cause you're like, oh, I'm not feeling it. Yeah. And then when you become friends with them, you're like, oh my God, this person is so much nicer and funner when the pressure's off. I think that's the key. Be, hang out with people as friends first for a while, get comfortable, don't rush into anything. And then if a spark flies, you know, go for it. Who's got that kind of time though, Katie? Our fans are aging out quickly. And I'm talking to you out there. You're getting older as this podcast goes on. And I'm looking out for you. And I'm not talking down to you. And Shannon thinks that I am talking down to you. But I'm not. I'm being a coach. And I'm trying to help you out of your lives. Okay? So don't try too hard, what Katie said. But you need to try a little bit. And I disagree with Katie. A lot of our fans need to become other people. I actually well, felt like you were talking directly to me, Mike, not yelling no, at the fans. I was, Shannon, okay. You're part of the solution here. That leak must have been waterboarding your head. <laughs> oh, I thought I was one of the incels that you were yelling at. Absolutely not, Shannon. You're okay. part of the solution. Thank you. Shannon, you're coming on the too hot, too mental, too handle island of ours. <laughs> yeah, I would have to. If too hot to handle would be easy for me because I don't have sex anyway. Ah, okay. <laughs> Wait, but the listeners probably know this. Is that a choice that you don't have sex? It's kind, oh, kind of. By Absolutely, the way, Absolutely, <laughs> it's a choice. Shannon is hot and she's smart and she's out there, but she doesn't have the same problem that our fans have, okay? Shannon is a head case. She's a hot head case <laughs> and she could be the first member of our yeah. very sexy mental hospital that we have. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, because there's other reasons why people can't have sex now, like COVID. Everybody's like a bit traumatized. So, uh, but yeah. Wait, I had an idea. Why don't I've you never listen? met somebody too traumatized to have sex, Katie. No, that's true. Yeah. I had sex during the actual COVID. Like I was dating during the like extreme pandemic. So I don't, I think you can still do it. But phone calls. You said that like you were being a bad girl when you said it. <laughs> It felt like I was being a bad girl because people were putting all, like some bad girl energy right now. <laughs> yeah, because people were mad. They were like, "Stay home for four months and don't go outside." So I was like sneaking out, going on like picnic dates, you know. Right. Kind of... Doctors but... are stupid. Can you say it, Katie? Say it with me. Doctors are stupid. I don't think they're all stupid, but I have met. I did have a doctor 
shake my head. And then uh, when he asked me if I was dizzy, he diagnosed me with vertigo. So he maybe isn't the smartest doctor. <laughs> what did he prescribe you? Um, two wines? <laughs> he didn't even give me medicine. Uh, an he Uber to his like, apartment? <laughs> back in Ireland though, so. Oh, yeah. Irish doctors. No, not great. No, doctors are great, but some, I mean, them just telling us to stay inside for four months and not to have any kind of a relationship with other people, that sounds crazy, right? Yeah, but I mean, that wasn't even just doctors, that was people, you know, people- It was also very... dentists. <laughs> it, was, it was just it, Instagram people. It was comedians too. I feel like I... everybody was like a bit on edge. But yeah. Uh, yeah, phone calls for your listeners, because if they're going to go on a date and if they do a phone call before, then that kind of releases a bit of the tension. You can have a bit of a chat. It's not on like your looks. You're just like, you can create a little vibe before. But looks are really important, Katie. <laughs> I mean, on your island, it will be. Yes. And in our mental health facility. Yeah. We only do mental health for people who are tens. All right, guys, I want to take a second to talk about our friends over at rockauto.com. Hey there, auto mechanics and super cool do-it-yourself guys who work on their own cars. I want to tell you about rockauto.com, the online store with every auto part at the best prices. This is your one-stop shop for everything auto parts. rockauto.com has been in business for 20 years, and they make it easy to find the parts you need at the best possible prices. No more talking to counter guys who need to order your parts aren't really sure what you're looking for, never have quite what you need, and then after all the hassle, we'll still charge you storefront markups. At rockauto.com, you can easily find everything you need, and whether you're a mechanic, an auto shop, or working on your own car, everyone has access to the same incredible pricing at rockauto.com. So if you're a car guy, right now go to rockauto.com and check out all the parts available for your car. You're gonna have so much fun looking at car parts. So once more, go to rockauto.com. No promo code needed as their pricing is already that good. When you order, make sure you tell rockauto.com that you heard about them on Mike Vecchione Investigates. Rockauto.com. All right, guys, let's get back into it. Um, okay, let's move on to um, Sharon, Shannon. What, where are we at time-wise? Uh, about 40 minutes. Wow. This has flown by, Katie. It was fun. It's really, we're having a great time. Mm -hmm. And it's important for our fans to realize you guys are having a great time. Yeah. Me, Katie, and Shannon are all having a great time. And you are having a great time also. And you are in your basement and you don't have that many possessions. But you're having a great time right now and you're going to get your life together and you're going to go out into your community and you're going to date people and you're going to talk to them and you're not going to talk to them about how rich you are. You're going to be authentic, but yeah. you're also going to sell yourself a little bit so that you can get out of the house and be a productive member of society. Yeah. And don't dwell in your basement because. I feel like everybody's just such a fucking moan nowadays. They're like, you know, they're just so like, oh, we live in a terrible time. And it's like, no, we don't. Yeah. Even if there's COVID, we live in the best timeline yet. I'm not, I wouldn't go back 50 years. I wouldn't go back 100 years. And we live, if you live in America, you're living in the best. If you live in Ireland, you're living in, or Europe, you're living in the best place. There's other places in the world that are like shite and they're like living in shite so that we can have this life. We, they're living in shite so you can live in a basement. So get out there, get on your date and shut the fuck up moaning. That's my advice. I love that. I love that you're talking to our fans that way. Shannon <laughs> calls it harsh. I call it necessary. But I love that you're talking to the fans that way. They need the guidance. And I think a lot of their problem is they have mold in their basement and it affects their brain. Yeah, I've had mold yeah. before. It's not good. They're already not road scholars. Then they're in a basement and then the mold, it dumps them down even more. Yeah, so, open your window, your little tiny basement window. Open, open your up. little tiny basement window and get some air. Let's go to some articles. Shannon, the big headline I think today is Groundhog Day. 
So, Katie, I don't know if they have this in Ireland. Maybe the groundhog is um, under the influence. Maybe he won't come out. Maybe he rolls around. Maybe he fights a cop in your culture. But our groundhog is uh, predicts the weather. Shannon, could you read a little bit of it for us? Sure. Okay, so uh, don't put away your cold weather gear just yet. Punxsutawney Phil just predicted six more weeks of winter. The famous prognosticated rodent picked the shadow scroll early uh, early Wednesday during the annual groundhog ceremony at Gobbler's Knob in western Pennsylvania, signaling that old man winter isn't clearing out anytime soon. Well, what the hell, Katie? Now, I don't know. Do you have something like this in Ireland where um, a rodent predicts the weather? No, we have nothing. I, I didn't even know. I don't think we have groundhogs in Ireland. I knew about the movie, the Bill Murray movie, but I also didn't know that was based off a real thing until I moved here. And Katie, like only recently. I have, I have to ask the tough questions. Do you have anything like this? Do you have a beaver that reads your horoscope? No. Do you have um, a bird that takes your temperature? Wait, we do have if cows stand underneath the tree, it means it's going to rain. Okay, now we're getting on to something. And it's going to be lightning. That was it. Yeah, it was lightning. A cow under a tree means a lightning storm is a coming. Yeah, yeah. I Thank forgot God. about that until you started all these. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, we right. do. We get to the bottom of things on this podcast and we care about our fans and we talk down to them. But we talk down to them so that they can raise their level. And now they know <laughs> if a cow is under a tree... <laughs> They need to get indoors and go back into their basement where they live. Yeah. Can I add huh? something, Mike? Sure you can, Shannon. Um, Staten Island Chuck uh, gave an opposite uh, prediction where he said that there will be an early spring. And statistically, Staten Island Chuck has been more accurate than Punxsutawney Phil. Count on somebody from Staten Island <laughs> to come in with a Punxsutawney Phil Staten Island Chuck. What do we do now, Katie? We have conflicting groundhogs different forecasts we have a regional problem how do you solve it katie um you get a third groundhog is there another one somewhere is well, the there jersey, a third groundhog there was uh but the new jersey groundhog died a day before groundhog's day how oh, convenient. He, he couldn't deal with the pressure he couldn't deal with the pressure maybe <laughs> well, he was I taken out he was, he was maybe he was poisoned he but was. Staten Island Chuck and Pontotani yeah. Phil didn't want to have somebody third way in, and they poisoned him. I agree. It's a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And these are topics that your listeners should bring up on their dates. Our listeners live for this. Okay, Groundhog Day is maybe bigger than Christmas for my wow. fans. Katie, it's a huge deal. Punks is 20, Phil, Staten Island, Chuck, different forecasts, different regions, steel cage match. Katie, what do you think? Are you an Ultimate Fighter fan? Yeah, I guess they could do it like what you do at Roosters, you know, cocks, not penises, but the animals. A cock fight? Yeah, he could have them a little, a little cock fight. Okay, but with the weather forecasts. With Yeah, with the badgers. What are they? Oh. I mean, groundhogs. They're groundhogs. They're not badgers. <laughs> Shannon, we're going to have to edit that out. <laughs> Okay. Do you enjoy um do you enjoy an animal that predicts the weather? Uh no, I don't care. I don't even check the weather of of the week. I just kind of just Yeah, I don't care. You don't respect when humans give you the weather, let alone a groundhog. Yeah, and I mean it's not even humans, it's my phone. So I don't really I still don't understand cells no wait, Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit? Yeah, I'm still a little confused by it. So well, Fahrenheit or you're, are you a Celsius girl? Celsius, but to be honest with you, I didn't really understand it in Ireland either. Like I never really thought about it. I just go outside. I'm like, oh, it's like warm. Well, yes. we don't really talk. We don't go like, oh, it's 30 degrees Celsius. No one really does that here. You guys are always like, oh, it's 50 Fahrenheit or whatever. And I'm like, I don't care. Just say it's well, cold. Let me, let me ask you this, Katie. What's small talk in your land? Good How gossip. do you do small talk? You gossip. Oh, you gossip about people? It's that small? Yeah, I don't really, It's I didn't really like it that much. But then when you come here, people just say a lot of things to your face. So I, I am kind of like a bit stuck between the two cultures. But yeah, you kind of be like, small talk would be like, oh, did you hear Jerry got a new farm and a new wife? And did you hear the wife's from Dublin? That's kind of what people talk about. Oh, wow. 
Or they the put- sports. Sports is big. Gaelic like football. Right. The news. People would talk about the news, like politicians and stuff, right. like in our country. America. Doesn't that cut? Ca- you guys talk about us? Yeah, you guys, especially when Trump was, and your listeners might get offended by this, but when Trump was president, it was really funny to read like the Irish articles that because I get them sent to my phone because they were just like had a completely different opinion, like fascinated. They were like, we can't believe this guy's president. We can't believe what he just said because there was no like stakes. No one cares about Trump in Ireland. So it was right. funny to have like a unbiased newspaper and read it. Yeah. And so, they just kind of thought it was ridiculous. They just were like laughing along. Ridiculous. And they thought it was fun. Fun, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it didn't affect them. But it's like, what about the weather as a way in? I mean, we use it as a way into stuff, you know what I mean? Somebody you don't know. Like I'm in a um I'm staying in the seventh floor, which is the penthouse of the hotel that I'm in. And I walk into the elevator and it's awkward a little bit. I go, I go, how about the weather today? The yeah. sun is pretty great, right? And and then you go, yeah, I love the sunshine. It's like back home, it's cold. And they go, yeah, back home, it's cold. And it's like we're on the same team. So to I get- funny feel, I'm using the weather <laughs> to say to the person, hey, we're on the same team. No, but you have to understand in Ireland, it rains 360 days of the year. So, I mean, if you're going to talk about the weather, you'd be like, oh my God, it was sunny. Like it, it didn't rain today. But it, like, it rains all the time, so it's not really... Do you just get on an elevator then because it rains all the time and hand the person a razor blade? No. No? Um, they have their own. Okay. <laughs> just checking. I uh, like the um, rain, though. Do you love the rain? Yeah, I, I like it. <laughs> umbrella or no umbrella? If it's really wet umbrella, just so I don't get a cold, but... Yeah. I, I I don't really need an umbrella. Like when I was at home, I was just using my jacket. It feels nice. It feels nice. All the like, it's fresh. You're a positive person. And yeah. our fans could really learn from you. Yeah. Our fans really have to think about the weather when they go out. They're very affected by everything. I think fragile is the word that I would use for them. Well, uh, they, need, they need a hardened up. Go live life. You'll be dead soon. That's some good advice. Yeah. <laughs> How about a groundhog for uh, COVID, like a bat that comes out and if he sees a shadow, it's six more m- Omicron? No, because people don't need to know what's happening. Like, because then you're just taking away hope. So I think just every day figuring it out with COVID is better than worrying about like, oh, this animal said we have it for six more months. But aren't animals who produce fun, Kitty? Where's your sense of adventure? You're being a Catherine right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's a Kathy. A Catherine's a nun. Okay. Um, let's go to the next one, Shannon. Okay, hold on. Okay, next one is um, oh the the beauty queen jellyfish. Yes. Okay, so the headline is beauty queen nearly dies from deadly jellyfish sting to her butt. Jesus. This beauty got close to home. Do you want to know something on my trip to Jamaica? Tom, one of the gas digital crew was stung by a jellyfish. Was he really? Mm -hmm. That's my nightmare. On the last day, the the last morning before we left, he got stung. Did you have to wee on him? (laughs) No, that's a myth. That's not real. But uh, no, he was okay. He just like he we looked it up. He took a shower because it's more about the warmth of the pee than it is like the chemical makeup of it. So he just like rinsed it off and he was good to go. But uh, I'll finish reading the article. Uh, Miss England pageant contestant Pratishtha Rout, 28, was reportedly left hospitalized for two days after being stung on the bum by a deadly box jellyfish during a luxurious escape to the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. The pain from the sting was unbearable, the model said. 2019 Miss England second runner-up told Southwest News Service on her January 28th attack, it felt like someone poured hot boiling water on my body and the skin started to melt. Oh, that sounds terrible. Are jellyfish only attacking hot people, Shannon, do you think? (laughs) You think Tom is hot? And then this is obviously a Miss England, a Miss England. I mean, the, the jellyfish know what's up. Maybe the more deadly the jellyfish, the hotter the person they go for. And you're saying Tom is not that hot because he was fine. Right. <laughs> or like not as hot as like a beauty pageant queen. Well, she's a beauty pageant queen. And I think it's an assault on the, the attractive. 
maybe it's a fan. Maybe he was just going up to be like, ooh, look at this arse and trying to grab it. And then right. it just stings by accident. Maybe yeah. he doesn't realize. An accidental sting. Yeah, he got too excited. It's like when right. the guy com- comes too fast. This jellyfish Pre- released premature. a code. Premature, yes. Sure. It's happened to the best of us. It's happened to the best of us. Um, Would you rather, uh, when you're in an aquatic environment, uh, Katie, do you swim with the dolphins? Is that a thing that you would do? No, dolphins are rapists. I don't want to get raped by a dolphin. Yeah, and they are. But they're really smart. And everybody always says that, how really smart they are. Yeah, that's why they're smart enough to be gang rapers. They also, um, I don't like fish or animal sea creatures. I, I like octopuses, but that's it. And they're supposed to be very smart also. Yeah, they're Did nice. The short video where they, they take a jar and they take um, they open the jar. I think they open it from the inside. Yeah, I've watched a ton of stuff as well. They like uh, will, if for people who have pet octopuses, they let themselves out of their cage and roam around and steal stuff in the house and then go back yeah. and let put themselves back in their cage. They steal stuff with one hand and they could be shaking your hand with the other hand while stealing all of your items. I don't like that. (laughs) I love it. It's duplicitous and it's dishonest. (laughs) And it's not what this podcast is about, Katie. That was a great word, Mike. It's duplicitous. And that's a big word for our fans. And I don't like a dishonest fish. (laughs) No, I like them. And they're so, their intelligence can't be measured against ours because they're just such a different form. Yeah. Um, so they're like, they're probably like way more intelligent than we are, but they only live for like three years. And then when they have a baby, they, they die, which I'm like, oh, that's awful. Yeah. If that was humans, we would never reproduce and we would all die out because I wouldn't die for a kid. No. Do you no. want kids? Um, yeah, I think so. Like one, but I have a big fear of having it in my body. It feels a bit like alien. I kind of think like half the world is like, not t- like it's like a conspiracy theory they're not telling us how bad it is <laughs> just so we can keep reproducing but oh, i don't know like a thing bursting out your vagina that sounds horrific to me um when you say bursting out of your <laughs> vagina it does sound horrific <laughs> yeah I, mean, I, don't, I don't think that's the medical phrase that that's what happens they just now. sew you up afterwards sometimes it bursts your arse what about a c-section is that for cowards is that the way they call it a c-section no because for a c-section it takes so long for the women to heal so it can be just as traumatic like no honestly i don't speak to my mother and she was uh like a real psycho growing up but the more i think about having kids i'm like no wonder she hated me <laughs> she probably was like this bitch <laughs> Because it's horrific. If you, like the through- baby, if you feel like the baby is going to give you trouble, do you purposely like eat burritos and stuff like that? Do I eat burritos right now? Would you eat burritos? Would you eat like some um, spicy, unsettling food to oh, if the, the child kids? was kicking to secretly get back at the child for kicking and for turning and for doing all kinds of other stuff, acrobatics in there? Mm. I was a very active uh, <laughs> child. And I would kick and I would spin and I would somersault. It's very athletic. In, in yeah, see, that sounds horrific. That sounds like having a creature. Do you eat burritos in order to punish him? No, I I would just feel like that would, I have IBS, so it would be only punishing me, really. The kid would be just like, it wouldn't even make it to the kid's stomach. Also, when women are pregnant, I just learned this because I read a child sex education book. Yes. But, uh, their stomach goes up underneath their tits. What the fuck? That one, that's horrific. That, again, is terrifying to me. It's transformative. It's <laughs> the of Albert. No, it's the horrors of our life. I think you're scaring a lot of our fans, Katie. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? You said they're incels. So I'm like, look, lads and ladies, maybe it's fine being in your basement and not having babies. I don't think they're incels. I just think that we need to give them a, a, a kick in the backside or their arse, as you say. <laughs> To get them out there, because I think our fans have a ton of potential and they're the best fans in the world. I just think they're stunted by the fact that um, they're less motivated, less intelligent than everybody else on the planet. And uh, but I think they have a lot of uh, there's a lot of hope for them. Yeah. And less intelligence is fine. You can get more intelligent. You just read more books and articles. Right. Like and who who even is unless you're like a scientist who like makes things for the world. Right. It really is intelligent. People are just People regurgitating are shit. Yeah. People with podcasts. People with podcasts. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Most are the smartest because we have the most to say. 
No, we're the dumbest of all. Katie, it's five. I know you have a hard out. Is there anything you want to plug before you go? We yeah, appreciate cool. being here. No, thank you. This is a lot of fun. Um, I have a podcast called The Shift, which is like sex education and stuff. But also, I always say that I don't know what I'm talking about. So I have like a, people on sharing. And it's usually as well, comedians being like, well, when I don't have a hard on, you know, like, so it can be a bit dumb and silly. It's not, I, I it was recently... I, my friend is in Australia and she heard a radio show talking about it. And they said I was a sex medical professional. And I right. was like, I don't know how this got lost over the con. I am not. So if you're an idiot and you want to have hear fun stories about sex education and dating, come listen to that. But it's not really factual. I think you like just fun. described our fans. <laughs> yeah. They know me as an investigator and a life coach. Okay. Oh, wait. And also my Instagram, Katie Boyle comic. Come Message me there. Talk to me. Katie Boyle Comic. Uh, I'm Mike Vecchione. Thank you so, so much for joining us at Comic Mike V on all social media platforms. MikeVecchione.com for future dates. Uh, we appreciate you guys for listening to the podcast. We love you. We cherish our fans. Um, please continue to listen. Again, MikeVecchione.com for dates. I also have my Instagram back at Comic Mike V, Instagram, Twitter. And now on TikTok, I'm going berserk on TikTok. So uh, I heard your people, voice on TikTok. There yes. was like a bunch of people using your audio. And I was yes. like, I know this voice. And then I like had to like search through and I was like, oh, this is your standard. Yes. I had a whole Probably journey. Probably an octopus gave it to them. <laughs> it's um, so weird when they do that. But anyway. It's weird. <laughs> Shannon, what do you got so we can get it, get us out of here, Shannon? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Shannon Lee 6982. Listen to my podcast, The Thing Is Ding. We talk about bad dates, fighting, and ghosts. Wherever you listen to Mike Vecchio and Investigates, you can also watch it live for free every single Thursday at 3, 3 p.m. Eastern at gasdigitalnetwork.com slash live. That's absolutely for free. But the best way to support the show is to go to gas, gasdigitalnetwork.com, use promo code MVI. That will give you a one week free trial, which gives you access to every episode we've ever done and every episode of every show on the Gas Digital Network, including the three brand new shows, which are um, Wild Goose with Zach Wild and JD DeServio of Black Label Society, Berg's Base with Aaron Berg, and uh, Yo, I May Rap with Luis J. Gomez and Dave Smith. If you love to listen on iTunes or YouTube, make sure to rate, review, and tell a friend. Go to podcastmerch.com for t-shirts, hoodies, and mugs, and brand new merch coming really soon, hopefully. And um, if you have your own uh, investigation to submit, send it into Mike Vecchione, investigates at gmail.com. That's it. Katie Boyle was our guest. You guys are the best. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on the YouTube premiere. Katie, thank you again for Shannon. I'm Mike Vecchione. We'll see you next week. Guys, thank you for listening to Mike Vecchione Investigates. And if you go to gasdigitalnetwork.com and use promo code MBI, you will get one week free. That's gasdigitalnetwork.com, promo code MBI, you will get one week free. Thank you again for listening to Mike Vecchione Investigates on the Gas Digital Network.